years on the wild Tasman Sea where two ocean currents meet, with cliffs, boulder beaches, black sand beaches and estuaries. Here fresh water meets the sea. Kawai swim in looking for a meal. Juvenile whitebait and eels come in from the sea and later will swim up the river to find a place to live. The islands create a semi-sheltered area with a diversity of underwater habitats that attract many species. A marine protected area prevents oil exploration here and limits the methods of fishing allowed in the area. Alongside the islands is Port Taranaki, the only port on the west coast of the North Island. Many commercial ships come and go to service our dairy and energy industries. There is a real possibility of accidents in dangerous seas with shallow water and islands. An oil spill would be disastrous for our local wildlife. Māori called the offshore islands Namutu, and when Captain Cook sailed past in January 1770, he called them the Sugarloaf Islands. What he did not know was that more than one and a half million years ago, the islands were underwater volcanoes. The sea level has changed and they are now islands. New volcanoes erupted on the land and created the ranges, the mountain and the fertile ring plain. The band of vegetation along the coast supports many animals. The Taranaki gold stripe gecko is difficult to find in the thick flax bushes. Gold stripes are found along the Taranaki coast but are rarely seen. The lizards are protected animals. There are several rare plants on the islands, such as Cook's scurvy grass. The islands have important seabird breeding colonies all year round, especially since all of the islands are predator free. The white smear of guano down the side of Saddleback Island shows generations of nesting and toileting birds. The outer islands are protected and unless you are a bird, you have to get permission to land on them from the Department of Conservation. The islands are important for seabirds, providing a place for some to roost between forays to search for food. Red billed gulls nest in the bush. This white fronted tern does not need any more than a flat spot to lay an egg. Little blue penguins live along the coast and in the harbour. This chick was rescued from dogs and cared for by Mr Chatfield. Some nesting boxes have been built by forest and bird members because the birds have lost their natural nesting sites. They're actually quite warm inside. And you know, you can feel the heat inside. Um, they're out of the dampness, they're on little rises, as you can see, I've got them draining so the water doesn't go inside. Mm. That's a good view, that's a great view. All marine organisms depend upon unpolluted seawater to sustain the delicate balance of life. All of these animals are vulnerable to pollution, which may be oil spills or sewerage, industrial waste or farm runoff. The industries are now very careful not to cause damage to the environment, but most of the pollution comes from farming practices. Much of the pollution is actually silt where river banks wash away. The soil erodes from the land, is swept down the rivers, enters the sea and smothers the delicate coastal reefs. The sea around Taranaki looks like this for much of the year. We can only protect the water by protecting the river banks, with expensive fencing to stop animals from getting too close to the water, and by growing plants to hold the land and filter the runoff. Where land meets the sea is the area with most living organisms. The coast of Taranaki has many reef areas, like these wave-cut platforms. 
The pools and boulders here provide a wide range of conditions for seaweeds and animals to find their niches. Neptune's necklace is well adapted to lying out in the sun or rain or battered by the storms that pound the coast, but it will take four years to grow again if damaged by too many of us walking on it. Neptune's necklace has its roots in the pink, coral-like seaweed, seen here under the microscope. This bit is really only two millimetres long. Look at what else is hiding in the pink turf. Tiny tube worms, constructing a wall with tiny sand particles. Their tentacles are thinner than thread, and this sea snail is only one millimetre long, grazing the pink seaweed which has trapped the sun's energy. All life depends upon the sun's energy being trapped by photosynthetic organisms and their waste gas, oxygen, is what we animals breathe. In this rock pool you can see the seaweeds, green ulva and pink coralina. They will become food for large animals. Can you spot a starfish? The rock pool is crowded with living creatures. Some of the organisms which fix the sunlight are so small that you cannot see them with the naked eye. This is what you see using a microscope. Here is a pinhead and a drop of seawater with plankton. The surface water of the ocean is rich with tiny living things. The phytoplankton converts sunlight to food. The fast moving zooplankton seek out and eat the phytoplankton. And they are all eaten by larger animals. Let's have a look at plankton under a more powerful microscope. The incoming tide is filtered by these tube worms, which eat all kinds of plankton. There are many tiny animals on the rocks of the seashore, some you won't see at all. The ones under this microscope are only three millimetres long. These sponges on the reef rocks also filter the water current and eat the plankton. Taranaki has some unique sponge gardens. Some fish hide in the reef during the day and at night go out to sea to feed on plankton. Different habitats attract different animals.
The crayfish wedge themselves into crevices, spines pointing outwards. There are strict rules regarding the size of crayfish taken. We must preserve a breeding stock, so you must measure your catch and do not fish for crays in the no-take area around Seal Rock. Divers tell us that there are many more crays in the no-take area since it became protected. Sealing was stopped a century ago and the New Zealand fur seal population has slowly grown. Their most northerly breeding ground is here. These seals are having a lazy afternoon. While the Sugarloaf Islands Marine Protected Area off New Plymouth has long been regarded as a special place, it is perhaps time for us to look at other places on the Taranaki coast and set aside areas which we will actively cherish, places which we will not fish, places to observe and learn from. <laughs>